When bringing a new product to market, you should always strive to minimize your financial risk as much as possible while getting your product to market as fast as possible. This is so you can prove the market demand with minimal upfront risk. As an entrepreneur, startup, inventor, or even a small company, with a limited budget, you need to focus on minimizing your upfront costs as much as possible, even if it means a higher product cost initially. In most cases, what is faster is usually not cheaper, for example, paying extra for expedited service. But in this video, I'm going to share with you 13 tips to not only save you money, but also to get your product to market faster so you can minimize your overall risk. Although all of these tips are critical, you definitely do not want to miss the last three, which will probably save you the most money and time in the long run. Hi, I'm John Teal with Predictable Designs. Okay, let's get started. The first tip that we're going to look at is number 13, and that is do not get a patent immediately. Obtaining a patent should not be a top priority for you. Just remember the majority of patents never actually make it to market. Do not stress about your idea getting stolen. In general, no one steals unproven ideas. And always remember your idea doesn't really have any value until it is turned into a proven product. Patents are a death trap for new entrepreneurs and can cause you to waste thousands of dollars and a year or more of your precious time. Getting a full patent takes a lot of time and money, and it's not something you should ever attempt to do on your own without an attorney. Luckily, there is a cheaper and much easier option than starting with a patent. You can file what is called a provisional patent application, which protects your product idea for one year. This gives you a year to judge your product's likelihood of success and whether or not it's worth spending the money for the full patent. A provisional patent only costs a couple hundred dollars and it doesn't require an attorney. And you can easily file one yourself in probably just a few minutes. Now, I, I'm definitely not anti-patent and I have a few of my own patents and they definitely have some value, but I just think patents should be a much lower priority in most cases. Tip number 12 is to use pre-certified modules. You will save money while reducing your design risk if you use electronic modules for your product's more complex functions. Let's say your product has to perform a specific function like Bluetooth or GPS. Well, you have three options. You can design a custom circuit, you can use a module, or you can use a combination of the two. Custom circuits will increase your upfront development cost, but will typically reduce your, your co unit cost at higher production volumes, whereas self-contained modules are usually used for more complex functions like Bluetooth, GPS, Wi-Fi, or even a high-speed microprocessor. And self-contained modules can be added to the same printed circuit board as the custom design circuits. Modules are especially beneficial to use for your wireless functions because they also simplify FCC certification, allowing you to get your product to market faster and cheaper. The only two downsides to using modules are increased unit cost and possibly an increased product size. Unless you have a large development budget or a product that has to be insanely small to succeed, modules are the way to go initially for many advanced functions. For many functions, you need to reach production volumes of hundreds of thousands of units before it makes financial sense to replace a module with a custom design. Tip number 11 is to partner with a manufacturer. There are several ways that manufacturers can help lower your cost. For instance, they may be willing to donate engineering services or amortize some of your higher costs, such as the cost for your injection molds for your product enclosure. They also have the ability to extend you favorable payment terms, even perhaps allowing you to get paid by your customers before you have to pay the manufacturer. Be sure to try to find a factory that isn't already manufacturing at capacity, because then they'll be more interested in working with you. But it must be a factory already manufacturing products similar to your own. Ultimately, you should try to find a manufacturing partner that has a vested interest in the success of your product. For my own product that I brought to market back around 2010, I was able to partner with a manufacturer that invested over $100,000 in my project. 
They offered me 90-day payment terms on the first few orders, allowing me to get paid by my customers before I had to pay them. When I first reached out to them, at that point, I had a decent prototype, but more importantly, I had gotten written interest from a large national retailer. Having this initial progress made it much easier to find a manufacturer that was willing to invest in my product. Tip number 10 is to get an advisor. Very few people have all of the skills and experience necessary to bring a new product to market. And even if they do, they likely won't always have the right mindset. When working alone, it is especially easy to get stuck in your own head, and it's critical to get outside advice and insight. Regardless of your skills and experience, you cannot get a new product to market without help. If you are an engineer, then you'll likely need help on the non-technical side of things, such as business operations, marketing, sales, funding, etc. If you are less technical, then development and manufacturing is where you're going to need the most help. Bringing on advisors will ultimately save you thousands of dollars and keep you from wasting months or years of your time going down the wrong path. And if you'd like to have me and a team of experts as your advisors, then be sure to check out my Hardware Academy program. Tip number nine is a really critical one, and that is to simplify your product. You've likely heard of the phrase minimum viable product or MVP for short. Basically, the goal of the MVP strategy is to simplify your product so you can get it to market as quickly as possible. Once your product is on the market, then you can begin gathering feedback. And based on that feedback, you can expand on your MVP to meet the market's true needs. Otherwise, you're only guessing what the market wants, and that's never really a good idea. The MVP concept is all about the process of build, measure, learn, and then repeat. The faster you can get to the measure and learn phase, the faster you can iterate your product and build your startup. One key to getting your product to market as quickly and as cheaply as possible is through product simplification. In my years of helping entrepreneurs develop new products, I've learned that simplification is essential for a new product to make it to market before the founders run out of money. Tip number eight is to buy a 3D printer. If appearance is important for your product, you will almost certainly need multiple iterations on your enclosure design to get it just right. And the cost of these prototype iterations can really add up with each version costing hundreds of dollars. For many products where appearance and ergonomics are critical, a dozen prototype iterations is is really not that uncommon. Fortunately, you can purchase a decent 3D printer now for a few hundred dollars. So if you think you're going to require more than a couple prototype iterations to get your enclosure design just right, then consider purchasing your own 3D printer. By creating your own 3D printed prototypes, not only will you save money on prototyping costs, but you're also going to significantly speed up your development time. The key to speeding up product development is to prototype early and prototype often. A 3D printer allows you to quickly iterate your prototype at very little cost. A lower cost 3D printer will be fine for your early prototypes, but you're probably going to want to use a professional prototype company for prototypes later on that you plan to share with others, just so you get a a higher quality prototype. Tip number seven is to learn new skills. There are a lot of skills required to bring a new product to market. And as an entrepreneur, you have to wear a lot of different hats. When I decided to bring my own product to market, I initially tried to hire a few different mechanical engineers to develop the mechanical aspects of the product since I'm an electrical engineer by training. But I kept getting frustrated that they weren't giving my project the priority I thought it deserved. I even had one of the engineers get really nasty with me telling me I need to calm down and stop pushing him so much. Well, needless to say, I stopped working with him immediately, and I ended up teaching myself how to do 3D modeling and design for injection molded plastic. This ultimately saved me thousands of dollars and even sped up development. Normally, learning a new skill slows down development compared to hiring someone that already possesses that skill. However, in some cases, such as when appearance is critical, I found it can speed things up if you learn to do it yourself. 
Even if you don't plan to do the task yourself, it's critical that you have a basic understanding of any task you plan to outsource. Otherwise, how can you manage them or be able to judge the quality of their work if you don't have the skills to review their work? Tip number six is to bring on a co-founder. Bringing on at least one co-founder has numerous benefits. They can bring skills, connections, and even money. The cost, of course, is equity in your company that you have to give away. But a small piece of a big pie is better than no pie at all. <laughs> Instead of outsourcing to an outsider, bring on a co-founder with these skills. Just be sure to bring on a co-founder that best complements your skills. For example, if you're an engineer, then bring on a marketer or vice versa. Just make sure you get along with them well because you're essentially going to be married to them for years to come. Tip number five is to minimize and delay certification costs. Certification costs can feel overwhelming to a cash strap startup, but there are ways to reduce or delay them. For example, if your product includes a rechargeable battery, you may be able to eliminate the need for UL certification by just bundling a pre-certified USB charger with your product. FCC certification is required for almost all electronic products sold in the U.S. to ensure they don't interfere with other radio communications. However, even if your product is wireless, you can save thousands of dollars on certification costs by using pre-certified modules for any of your product's wireless functions. Finally, certifications are typically not required for small sales tests of a few hundred units unless your product requires UL safety certifications or includes a custom wireless radio instead of a pre-certified module. You are best to delay certification until after you've proven the product will sell or, and you are in the final stages of transitioning to mass manufacturing. Tip number four is get a design review. Prototyping a product is not cheap and you can save a lot of money by reducing the number of prototype iterations you have to do. You can reduce your prototyping cost and your total development time by having an independent engineer review your product design before you order the actual prototypes. Regardless of whether you've designed the product yourself and you're the greatest engineer on earth or you've outsourced it to an experienced engineer, you still need to get an independent design review. All big tech companies have dozens of engineers review any new designs to try to catch problems early, and so should you. Okay, now we are down to the final three, and these are super critical, so definitely pay t close attention to these last three. Tip number three is to keep your injection molds simple. So high-pressure injection molding is the technology used to produce custom plastic parts like your product's enclosure at high volumes. It requires the use of molds that are machined or, or carved out of metal. Liquid plastic is then injected at high temperature into this mold's cavity, and once it cools, the mold is open and the formed part is removed. Molds are expensive and they can cost tens of thousands of dollars for really high production. A single cavity mold can produce one plastic part at a time, whereas a multi-cavity mold can produce multiple parts at one time. When first ramping up production, be sure to stick with single cavity molds to keep your upfront costs down. Another way to keep your mold costs down is by using a softer metal like aluminum for your, your first molds instead of steel. Just realize they won't last nearly as long as a harder steel mold will. You can also reduce the, your overall mold cost by reducing the number of molds you need. When designing the 3D model for your product's enclosure, try to minimize the number of individual parts required since each part will likely require its own separate mold. And then finally, be sure to keep your mold a simple pool design without what are called side actions. And I'm not going to go into a lot of details, just know you need to avoid side actions if possible. This means the manufactured part can be easily pulled out of the mold without the need for expensive and complex side actions. It's really common for inexperienced 3D designers to design an enclosure that requires side actions, but with some creative design techniques, they can almost always be eliminated. 
Tip number two is going to be a really critical one, especially once you're, you're past the prototyping stage and you're actually beginning to sell your product. And that is to use what's called purchase order financing or invoice factoring. If you can't find a manufacturing partner that's willing to give you favorable payment terms, then you may want to look into purchase order financing and invoice factoring. If a company with an established credit gives you a significantly large purchase order, you may be able to obtain these types of financing. The beauty is that this type of financing does not depend on your credit rating, but instead it depends on the credit rating of your customer. With both PO financing and invoice factoring, the lending company is going to take over the job of collecting payment from your customer. And that can be a good or a bad thing. Having a third-party company interacting with your customer can potentially be dangerous, so just be careful. And then the number one tip to save you both money and time getting your product to market is to engage with customers now. The only way to truly validate a new product and prove there is product market fit is by actually selling it at the retail price. But you need to engage with customers much earlier than that Otherwise, the product that you develop will be much less likely to succeed in the market. When bringing a new product to market, you have to start with lots of assumptions. Unfortunately, most of those assumptions are going to end up proving incorrect, no matter how strongly you believe them to be true. This is why you must engage with customers as early as possible. Many new product innovators mistakenly think they need a perfect, market-ready prototype before they can begin engaging with customers. This is simply not true, and you can begin engaging with customers for feedback with nothing but an idea. You should strive to develop your product with the market or with the customer instead of you developing it for them based on your incorrect assumptions. If you found this video helpful, then be sure to check out this video here where I share with you the ugly truth about developing a new electronic hardware product.